they've gone through and tore out drywall and done a bunch of stuff. Okay, you're making me nervous. Yeah. I got a gun on me, so. I, I, <laughs> that's the part that's making me nervous. My name is Meet Kevin, and when I first heard that it was possible to buy 29 homes for just $2,000 each, the first thing I thought is, what's the scam? And so being that 27 year old real estate broker who makes money investing in real estate, I thought this is something I need to check out. To help me understand the math, the upsides and the downsides, I met up with Brandon from the channel Investment Joy. And my wife, she's sitting at home saying, Brandon, why are you getting yourself into? You're nuts. You can't even, you're overloaded now with all these rentals. I told her, I said, honey, I'm gonna get 15K off this guy and I'm finally gonna get us a garage. Because, you know, obviously we're in Ohio and there's snow everywhere. I've never owned a garage in my life. Now, initially things seemed very exciting, but things got intense pretty quickly. Fuck. This one's open. Did you know that? This is the eviction. Oh, that's great. This is the one, the eviction squatter one. If you pay attention to Brandon's hip here, you can see he has his hand on his hip holster just in case he needs to pull a firearm on vagrants, criminals, thieves, or who knows what could be inside of these homes that have now unexpectedly been getting broken into. Now, they've gone through and tore this one up pretty bad. This is when I realize owning a mobile home park as a real estate investment in central Ohio is definitely a different style of real estate investing from what I'm used to. Okay, you're making me nervous. Yeah. I got a gun on me, so. Uh, I, I, <laughs> that's the part that's making me nervous. See, it's not actually the gun that was making me nervous. It was the need for one that was making me nervous. I teach in my real estate investing courses and my finance courses that you should invest in places that you feel comfortable in that you don't need a gun for. This is what you have to deal with. Uh -huh. So they've probably tried to strip some of the wiring out and stuff like that. And so it ended up being pretty early on in my tour of Brandon's Park that I realized, yikes, you better be prepared to be a full-time real estate investor if you want to get involved in a project like this, or have somebody like Brandon to do it for or with you. Do you remember the trailer that we kicked the people out of? Somebody's got in the doors yet again here, and they have stole some wiring and stuff out of it. Now, I'm about to show you some of the other units that we toured, and we're also going to break down the math behind Brandon's investment into this mobile home park. You'll see some of the ROI potential. If in the meantime, though, you are curious about do-it-yourself property management, personal finance, how to become a better salesperson, or how to invest in real estate where you can buy below market value real estate and run a stress-free life by placing longer term tenants, check out those links below and use special coupon code BRANDON24 for a discount off those courses of 24%. You all right? Yeah, I'm just angry at that. Yeah, I would be too. I'm sorry that happened to you. Well, I mean, that's the problem with enforcing rules and things like that on people. I mean, yeah. they've got away with so much crime and so many things for such a long period of time that they just kind of expect they can continue to get away with it. And now I'm coming in and trying to set, set, set stuff up to be better for the nice tenants. You know, I was in one of these ladies' trailers down here, what was it, last week, and she's so nice, takes care of her trailer, everything, and she said, you know, she just doesn't understand why so the stuff happens here. The trailers get damaged, it's trashed and stuff like that, and realistically, it costs her money out of her pocket every time somebody does this kind of crap to me as the trailer park owner. Right, because so, rents have to go up. Rents have to go up every time something's damaged. So I've got to come in with a plan to keep things efficient. Now what's this one? I see this one's windows. Uh, it's this... just, it's been trashed. Um, we went in, that's gonna be salvageable. I have a significantly higher budget. So we've got 7K on these trailers, and then on something like that, I've got about 15 to 20K. And if you, you've, we've talked about the budget to repair things in Ohio, 
after I spend 12 to 15 K on this specific trailer, it's going to be really, really nice. Um, everything new in it, essentially. We're just keeping the shell and the frame. Now, what, what happened with this one? Why is this one so damaged? Um, actually, both of these here. Angry tenants. These are, these are both angry tenants. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Are, are they gone? I mean, the door's open. Yeah, it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. But like I've said, if nobody goes into these situations to try and fix things for the better, nothing will happen. This is where you can really begin to see a comparison. In the lower end, you might see some higher cash flow. Hello? But apparently you're dealing with some additional risks and some additional work. So you might be wondering, are you getting rewarded additional cash flow? Or is that payment for the work you're putting in? I don't think anybody's in here, but... So this one's like some of the others, it's just trashed. I do believe it's fixable. But it's a situation, you know, I've got a great budget to strip everything out in here and start over again. Oh, like I said, I've got about 15K, maybe 20K for a property like this. 15 to 20, and you could redo this whole thing? Are you serious? Yes. Oh yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> That doesn't seem like a lot of money. Well, I mean, worst case scenario, done. we tear it out of here, and I've been talking to some of those companies that do the tiny houses. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out with the uh, State of Ohio Mobile Home Park Compliance Board if we can just bring in a tiny house and set it down on one of these trailer lots. Wow. So that's kind of an option here if I totally screw up and fail on these individual trailers. The goal is, you know, we've got the money for all these trailers to be brought in. That's why these are sitting here. They're waiting to be installed. And wait, then... wait, you're in this? Yes. You didn't just take this out? Yes. This these one are coming going in. in. This one's going in and I've got a budget to fix up the trailers. Because like this one? This one here, because I'm getting them from another trailer park that's being, um, they've evicted everybody. A luxury developer with a local large municipality has gone in and they've evicted about 100 people out of a trailer park so they can be bulldozed. Wow. So these trailers, they might as well be free. Brandon, where'd the staircase go? Um, it's not been installed yet. It's sitting up. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Did you bring this one in? Yeah. This is one you brought in? Yes, we just brought it in. This is what a $2,000 trailer looks like. Wow. Okay. And so what are you going to do to it? Um, I, I need to decide. Like I said, the energy efficiency upgrades are the absolute first thing. Yeah. Well, first things first, I'm going to go through and clean it. Well, it's also freezing. Uh, here. Yeah, it's also freezing. The, it's ugly. There's bad trim. There's some hole. Not, there's not any holes in the wall, which that would be a killer. Now, this is where Brandon talks about his childhood and how he grew up in properties that were in worse condition than this. And as a result, he's come up with a rule. So my thing is I'll never rent a house out that's worse than what I grew up in. That's my rule. I will not live in any of that. I mean, I will not put a tenant in a situation I would not be willing to go into. So we've got kind of crummy cabinets, kind of crummy countertops. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna take a look, figure out what's the most economically viable thing. I mean, how much do you wanna spend on each of these units? Fixing um, I've got a budget of, um, it amounts to, I think, 7K per. 7K per? Yeah. I mean, that's gonna get you, what, it's, paint, flooring, I and, can redo the countertops and cabinets too. And, and you gotta do the so, furnace though. Yeah, we I mean, gotta What's the furnace gonna run you? Oh, and there um, are holes in the ground. Like there's a there's yeah. a hole right there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what the furnace is. And I've got the a, insulation yeah. and the bathroom. How yeah. are you gonna do it for seven? I don't get it. Because like if you do the insulation, there's no windows. Yeah. You do there, the insulation. There's, there's a window there, I promise. Somebody kicked it out or it fell out when it, uh, when they were moving the trailer. Wait, so it's not there? No, <laughs> it's not there now. Oh, okay. It's sitting right here somewhere. It's somewhere. But, <laughs> But um, the thing is, you can get a discount when you go in and buy 30 furnaces. Yeah. But I mean, still, like yeah. $1,000 for the insulation, you have a $7,000 budget, now you got six left. Yeah. Then you got to do a furnace, that's going to run you at least $1,200, at least. No way yeah. you're shaking your head, come I on. Can, I, can, I can get it installed. A, installed, I can get a nice furnace installed. For, and if we do them all in one go, I can get them for probably about 800 bucks. Oh my gosh, okay, fine. So yeah. so call it eight, you're in now, now you got insulation and furnace, you're at $1,800. Now you gotta fix the window, the floor, paint, the countertop, the bathroom, appliances. 7K? I, I, I can and do the it. outside and the yeah. skirting? Yeah, I can do it. No way. Okay. And I mean the whole floor is bouncing. Yeah. But not every trailer is like this though. I've got an average of 7K okay. per. So 
I think I can get it done for seven, but I've got some wiggle room. I'm just worried because you said this was one of the new ones. <laughs> yeah, but the older one, the, not, the older, this is a newer um, age-wise trailer, but it's kind of dumpy. I've got older ones sitting over there that are way nicer than this. Can we go into some of these? Um, yeah, let me see what I have. And you know, the, the, the worst thing is, or the craziest thing is, I could, I could put skirting on this, set it up, and I could ask for my 550 a month. I'd have 50 applications on it tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. Are, you're saying put skirting on this so oh, you yeah. meet code, rent it the way it is now and you have 50 applications? Guarantee it. Why? Because no, there's no affordable housing in this area because they've run everybody out. No one wants to be a landlord. Now it's common to hate the landlord, but if you take a look here at what Brandon is doing and dealing with, if anything, he's the one providing an ethical service by providing affordable housing. What do you mean your comments? <laughs> the people saying, how many of them would love to be my tenant? Oh. And they think my houses are great. Wow. And then you start talking about $500 for a two bed, one bath. I mean, people put up a lot with a lot for that. Uh, but I mean, know. isn't this so much more risky than what you're used to doing with just the singles and the duplexes, oh, yeah. and fours? But if you don't have any risk, there's no reward, so. Well, but I mean, I guess, <laughs> jeez. Uh, but I mean, do you really think like your apartment deals are risky? I'm told they're risky every day. They, at this point, I've done so many of them. I what feel do you like mean? they're Who no tells risk. you they're risky? I just, I don't know. Um, people, local people, I've got some really wonderful investors that I have good relationships with. And they say, Brandon, you should only be dealing with luxury apartments and luxury housing. And I, I don't really do any of that. I've got some nice houses. Don't get me wrong. I've got some gorgeous, historic, houses we've spent tons of money on. And they, they're right. They do not provide me one minute of stress. They're great. They're right. great. I've got good tenants in them. They provide me very little stress, but also the ROIs are low. Sure. So I'm trying to get a balanced portfolio and a mixed portfolio so that I can get a reasonable return. I can make my mm -hmm. investors happy. I can make myself happy with the cash flow. And um, those kinds of opportunities are everywhere. This is where I bring up comparing more expensive markets, you know, $150,000 plus to this area. Uh, and, and that's why the play that we'll do in these higher end markets is I'm just looking for deals that I could buy for say 450. I put in 50 grand, which yeah. to me is a basic yep. cheap remodel, uh, it, but then it's worth uh, you know, six or 625. So you're building in this 100, 125K right away. Uh, it, you know, that's what I call buying these wedge deals. It doesn't seem like that's the play out here. No. I mean, people do that here. It's just not my market. Yeah. Now, would you ever want to transition? I think at some point that it, I'll hand a lot of this stuff off to management once it is where I want it to be. Yeah. And then I have the ability to go in and, you know, I think that I might become more passionate about the lower ROI, funner deals. Uh -huh. Less stress, but at this point in my life, I feel like this is what I need to do. Lower cash flow yes. ROI, right, right? Yeah. Now, when a lot of people hear ROI, they think there is only one type of return on investment. A quick primer, there are three, especially when it comes to real estate, but pretty much when it comes to anything. One is straight up cash flow, the positive money you're getting from either rent or dividends. Number two is appreciation, like values going up or stock prices going up. And three is a special kind of ROI that a lot of people forget about, but that can oftentimes be the easiest, especially when it comes to real estate buying real estate below market value. When you combine these three things, you actually get a total ROI. I see a couple windows here broken that I'm not used to. So I don't know if those were damaged in transport or they are just, ah. if they were damaged in transport or somebody came by and decided to break something because they're angry. Ah. You know, come in. This is another one that we'll be renovating, getting set up here very soon. This is a nicer one. Yes, I, I think so. It has the potential to be nicer. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. What, what do you do with the wallpaper? Um, the wallpaper comes off the uh, dumpy uh, wood paneling gets sealed up. Just primer painted? Yeah, we, I'll, 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 I will probably be out here till one o'clock in the morning again. Don't tell me you're gonna do it. Oil-based paint, I might be. 
just just to get it done. Is this how you keep your costs down? Yeah, I mean, I, I do that stuff once in a while. Like I said, I'm not too proud to do anything mm. at this point, so I'm willing to go in. There's exposed plumbing in here, which that's a no-no. So this panning wall, paneling will probably all have to come out. They did their, I mean, this, the, the work quality here is terrible. So whoever did this, did whoever did some of the finishing work, the trim work, stuff like that, they had no clue what they were doing. So, but from my perspective, it's easily fixable. Jeez. Well, I mean, what would nice. you do to the bathroom? You paint it? You're gonna put down like a linoleum floor? Yeah, I'll. I probably will even redo the tub in there because that just looks like garbage. You mean take it out, put a new one in, or refinish it? Um, probably take it out, put a new one in. Wow. Yeah, because I mean that tub, the surround, that's all. It's just, oh, it's ugly. Mm. Um, then tear the paneling out. I mean, probably re drywall. Um, I'm sure this one will run a little over the seven K, but well, maybe not. I don't know. I have to get my guys in here and see what they'll do because they've, they've done miraculous things for minimal cost. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the guys that oh, I got dear. these off of, the trailer company that's being pushed out of town, uh -huh. they um, oh, man. are treating everything for bugs and stuff like that. Sure. <laughs> just in case. They just put the can there to make you feel like they yeah. did. Now Brandon tells me the story of how he got some amazing deals from a fire insurance claim where he got undamaged material for a fraction on the dollar. You, it, it's amazing some of the things you can do when you buy in bulk. I go in and I buy 25,000 square feet of carpet. And we're not talking like cheap commercial carpet. We're talking like Berbers, like stuff they sell at Lowe's and Menards for 350 a square foot. My cost on it was about five cents. Now, what about the roofs? I mean, if you have to like re-roof some of them. If we have to re-roof them, we redo it. That, we re just put a new roof on this, this building out here where the laundromat's gonna go. Uh -huh. Oh, the laundromat's yes. gonna go in this brick yes. or uh, yeah. concrete. It was actually basement. one 20, 30 years ago and they just stopped maintaining it and fell apart. And um, now we're trying to bring it back up. And I have- This will be your fourth laundromat. I have, yeah, and I have 950 in that roof there. $950. Yes. For all that metal? Yes. It's not bad. Three, it's like 350 in the metal and then 600 in labor. Now it's time to talk numbers. One day out of the blue, a guy calls me and says, Brandon, I've got a whole bunch of money to deploy. He messages me and he says, I've got seven figures to spend on an investment. And I told him no. That was like at 8 p.m. at night, he sent me those messages. The next morning at my office, 10 o'clock, my buddy Sean that owns this trailer park said, Brandon, I'm selling the trailer park. I said, all right, how much do you want for it? He because said, here you are struggling trying to figure out how, how would I even deploy this guy's yes. money if he gave it to yeah, me? Yeah, because the biggest deal that I've ever done before was like a $60,000 house. I mean, I've never done anything big and before. And this is in the threes. Yes. What was um, it, 325? 325. He initially asked for 400. We talked him down to 325. He's carrying back $100,000. You talked your buddy down. Yes. <laughs> My buddy down. You even negotiate the with your buddy. My investor's my buddy too. He's a really nice guy. He's cool. You're just buddies with everybody. Yeah. So um Okay, so, so what's okay, so you bought it for three twenty five. I, I gotta know though. How you, you're gonna be benefiting from some of the cash flow from this, right? Yes. Oh, so yeah. you're you're an investor, a partner in this. Yes. Now, my favorite question, how much out of pocket are you to be a part of this deal? Negative fifteen. <laughs> You got wait no 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 no. I you, told you, my what? part. I told the partner that I wanted 15k for the opportunity because I could. I told him you know potentially I can shop this deal to other investors. So we know that Brandon is partnering with an investor who put up the capital of essentially seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, possibly even more if needed. Well, the expectation is that each of these coaches or mobile homes will be able to rent for $500. Now, there are already 20 coaches here. Brandon just bought an additional 29 for $2,000 a piece, which means we have a total of 49 trailers. 49 times $500 is $24,500. Now, Brandon's investor put the money up and paid Brandon to find the deal, but Brandon didn't put up any money himself. However, Brandon, I believe, is a 50% partner on this deal, which with $24,500 of gross cash flow, we could probably expect a net cash flow of somewhere around 
$16,000, which divided by two might leave a net cash flow of $8,000 for Brandon, even though he put zero money into the deal, just his expertise and his work and efforts. And now you might be wondering, how does that still make sense for the investor if he's giving away half of his return? Well, watch this return math. If the investor makes that $8,000 times 12, that's $96,000 per year, divided by the investor's $750,000, the investor is yielding over 12.8% on their money for doing virtually nothing. Because remember, Brandon's doing all the work. Okay, so, I mean, I, I, I'm a little nervous about this. Yeah. This is this is not something I would do. Yeah, come back in a year and let's see how it's going. I think I will have to. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't doubt your tenacity and your enthusiasm, but I, I also don't know how I feel about, you know, painting the wood paneling with oil-based paints myself in the middle of the night when when you know windows are getting broken into and you're you know you're walking around with your hand on your hip yeah. day day in life i've got yeah i've got i've got good life insurance <laughs> well we did talk we about need to be that sponsored by ladder <laughs> I, t I I still cannot believe how simple that was. Like I feel yes. like we should be sponsored yes. because like talking Ladder about needs it. to get a hold of us because it was. <laughs> they awesome do a insurance. referral link thing, but it's limited to like a thousand dollars in California or oh, something. Oh gosh, like. dang it! <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, but I've got life insurance, and I'll probably go up to an even bigger policy at some point in the near future. Well, and now what's going to happen is Ladder's going to see this, and rather than sponsoring you, they're going to raise your premium. I hope not. <laughs> If I'm still alive, Kevin Kevin will be out here. Uh, if not, add me as a beneficiary, please. <laughs> right next to your wife and your yeah. four children. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's Meet go. Kevin. <laughs>